Hello everyone, welcome to our study today in the book of Daniel chapter 8 verses 15 to 27. I am delighted to have this opportunity to study the word of God with you. It is my prayer that God will communicate to us. He is going to teach us, he is going to correct us, he is going to train us through his word. So today we are looking at Daniel chapter 8 verses 15 to 27. And it is 553 BC. I will read, And it came to pass when I, even I and Daniel, and seen the vision, and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man, and I heard a man's voice between the banks of lie, which called, and they said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid, and he fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the hand shall, the, shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground. But he touched me, and he set me upright. And he, he said, Behold, I will make you know what shall be in the last end of indignation. For at the time appointed, the hand shall be. The ram which you saw, having two horns, are the kings of Min Mindia and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of the kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of, of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall, be, he shall destroy wonderfully, and he shall prosper and practice, and he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his heart, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many, shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without end. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Therefore, shut up the vision. For, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days afterwards. I, afterwards, I rose up and did the, the king's businesses. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Let's pray. Our dear everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we, are, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us, O Lord, even to share your word with your people who are called by your name. Tonight, O oh Father, we are delighted, we are happy that Job, our Father, your word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and the earth will pass away, but your word will by no means pass away. Your word is powerful, your word is able to do that which you intend it to do. We are ready, O oh Lord, to learn from you that, Father, you are going to give us wisdom which comes from above. You are going to give us understanding, you are going to give us knowledge, you are going to give up hope, you are going even to strengthen us, O oh Lord. Our space shall be built on Christ Jesus, who is a solid rock. We are ready to hear from you. We are ready to learn from you. We are ready to be trained by you, O oh Father. We are ready to be corrected by you because we know, O oh Father, once your word come, we, it will never leave us the same again. Blessed be your name. Even those who are not born of God, those who don't believe in you, as they hear your word, O Father, your word is like a fire. May it purify their heart, O oh God. May, may it break anything that, that, does, that prevent them from knowing you, O oh Father. And may they come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Any thought, any imagination which exalts itself about the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we are breaking it down right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and we declare to our Father, you are one, we wrap our place in our heart, in our souls, in our families, in our communities, in our institutions, in every place, oh Father, where we are, you are one, we will be exalted, because you know, oh Lord, you are one, is able to do that which you said it to do. Blessed be your name. I pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Let's now go and see this study. So, Daniel sought, verse 15 tells us, he sought the meaning. So even us, we should be interested to know the things of God. We should have that in desire to know them more, more, and more, and more. Actually, God says, seek me, and you will find me. So we should be seeking God diligently. Actually, another verse tells us that those who seek God diligently, they will find him. 
so seek and you will find so that you are considered eight the thing and uh, and in desire to know the discoveries you you, you want them to know to get the understanding from the vision he and the seniors we have read in there in verses 1 of Daniel chapter 8 to 14 there was the vision so in verses 15 we see him now being given the meaning after he sought so seek and you will find that is what God tells us Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 tells us seek and you will find so let us desire to seek God and we are going to find when we seek him so we see the orders given to the angel Gabriel angel Gabriel is one of the angels of God in the Bible whom we see he is given the ministry of communication so most of the time many instances in the Bible we see God communicating through this angel by the name Gabriel then during the birth of Jesus he was sent to 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 the parent to the Mary and the Joseph also the time of of Elizabeth and the Zachariah, who are the parent of John the Baptist, we see this angel Gabriel was sent and many other instances. So yes, your dad here um, by this man who and by the one who and the appearance of a man. And many think it is Christ himself who wandered uh, angel Gabriel. Because even in the Old Testament, Christ was appearing in many incidences. He came to help his people through what is called Christology. So Christ used to appear many instances. So it is considered that he is the one who is honoring in John Gabriel to make the to, to make Daniel understand the vision. So God, when he is pleased to make use of the ministration of angels, he sent them not only to protect us, but he also, also to, in, to instruct us. So angels have, have so many roles which they play. Sometimes they come to correct us, to instruct us, to protect us, to guide us, to fight for us. So angels have all those uh, purposes which God sent them. He also sent them even to serve, to serve us as, as God designs to do it. Also we are told the, the response which Daniel earned. Uh, we are told that when he came near, I was afraid. So I, I think Daniel maybe could not withstand the, the appearance of this angel, of this mighty, because it was extraordinary, the message from heaven. It put him to, to pray. Although at this time, we know Daniel has seen so many visions, he fell upon his face, actually not to worship, but because he could not withstand the, 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 the brightness, the glory of this angel. So being prostrated to the ground, actually we are told he fell asleep, verse 8. When he came, so uh, we, we we may think that this brightness it is the one which made him to lose his strength. Also, also the disciples in the garden, we are told when Jesus went to, to, to pray, they slept for sorrow, as there was no. So the spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. So that year, uh, we he fell asleep, and the angel, of course. He is, he is the one who made Daniel to, to, to wake up and to be given the revelation. Also, we are given the relief which the angel gave to Daniel with great encouragement to him to expect satisfactory and discovery of the meaning of this vision. Actually, it is, we, we, we are, it is written that he touched him, that is, he touched Daniel after the young Pharaoh asleep and he set him up his feet, verse 18. So even John the Baptist and a similar response before Christ, because in the book of Revelation, one seventeen, uh, we are told that, and when I saw him, that is John, when he saw him, that is Christ, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first, I am the last. So that is always the response which uh, God gives his children when you see they are fearing. Fear not. So even you, right now, God is telling you not to fear. And nobody can have experience with the living God and remain the same. You must humble yourself. You must uh, forsake your evil ways and be willing to be instructed by him. So it was a gentle touch that the angel he gave to Daniel to show that he came not to hurt him, not to, to plead against him. 
with his great power. Actually, angels excel in power. They are mighty power. That One of the characteristics of angels is that they excel in mighty. One angel is able to destroy the, the whole world which is ungodly. So with the heavy hand upon him, but to help him, to put strength upon him. So God, when he touches his people, he strengthens them, he encourages them, he favors them, he uplifts them, he raises them up, he gives them the direction, he gives them counsel. So we see young God and decide to instruct uh, Daniel and instructed him. So even when we are asleep, God comes and instructs his people. Even when we are asleep, he promised to inform him, understand, oh, son of man. This is the angel telling uh, Daniel. So you shall understand if you are willing to apply the understanding. He calls him son of man. So when the Bible talks about son of man, uh, it is to, to show us the way we are fragile, the way we are fading away, the, our limitation. When we are called son of man, meaning that we are human beings, we are limited, we have weaknesses, we need help. So, the Messiah was also called the son of man because he was a human, 100%. At the same time, of course, you know he was God, 100%. So, as a prophet, so he was greatly loved. Daniel was greatly loved. He assures, he assures him that he shall be made to know what he had asked at last, verse 19. So, let it be laid out for comfort to those who shall live to see these calamities, times that there shall be an end. Actually, it tells him that there shall be an end to the suffering. At the time of the end, shall the vision be fulfilled. When the last end of, of the suffering will come to an end, that is what we are told. Actually, the suffering of, of the Jews, it lasted about 300 years or 400 years. So, that is the time at which if this vision was appointed to to last. Although it is not exact, it is not fixed. The time is not fixed, but at the appointed time, that uh, calamity would prevail. So, we are, let us now see the meaning, the meaning of the vision which Daniel had. Uh, the first, that is the goat with the two, with the two ones represented the monarchies of Persia. The two monarchies of Persia and uh, Mendes. That is the ram. So the ram signified the, the kingdom of Mendia and the Persia. By this time now, these people, they are not ruling. The goat signified the king of Greece. The great on was the first king who was called uh, Alexander the Great. And the four horns represented the four kingdom, which was to come after Alexander the Great died. So they are seen to stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. None of them ever made the figure that Alexander did. So there is somebody by the name who is called Josephus. He related that when Alexander had taken Tyre and subdued Palestine, and was upon his march to Jerusalem, Judas, who was then high priest, actually Nehemiah mentioned this person by the name uh, Jadas, he, fearing his range, that is the range of Alexander the Greek, the Great, and he recourse to God by prayer and the sacrifice for the common safety, and was by aim warned in a dream that upon Alexander's approach he should draw upon the gate of the city, and that he and the rest of the priests should go forth to meet him in the habit, and all the people in white. So Alexander seeing this company, I'm quoting Josephus, Alexander, seeing this company at a distance, went himself alone to the high priest, and having prostrated himself before that God, whose name was engraved in the golden plate of his martyr, is first saluted him, and being asked by one of his own captains why he did so, he said that where he was yet in Macedon, musing on the conquest of Asia, there appeared to him a man like unto this, and thus at a tyrant who invited him into Asia, and assured him of success in the conquest of it. The priest led him to the temple, where he offered the sacrifice to God of Israel, as they directed him. There they showed him this book of the prophet Daniel. 
that it was therefore told that Angrisian should come and destroy the Persians, which animated, animated him very much or changed him very much in his expedition. He was now meditating against Darius. Hereupon he took the Jews and their religion under his protection, promised to be kind to those of their religion in Babylon and in India. Whether he was now marching and in honor of him, all the priests that are the sons born that year called them Alexander. End of quote. So that is a quote by that person by, by the name Josephus. So we move on. We are told about this uh, special king who, who, who was to, ri to rise from Greece. His name was Antiochus and he was your present to the Jews. This is seen to be the latter time of the kingdom of Greek. So Antiochus Epiphanes, he, he came later. He was among the generals, the four generals who took over after Alexander the Great died. So he was a transgressor. He was full of wrath. Actually, he is the one who destroyed the Jews. Iniquity actually was his characteristics. He was, he was against God. He, is a, he actually was a picture of Antichrist, the way Antichrist will be when he come, so that God cannot in honor bear with them any longer. Then shall we stand up this king, this king who was to be used by God as a rod to correct in Jews because of their rebellion against God. So here we, we learn that his character. We are told he shall be a king of fierce countenance, insolent and furious, neither fearing God nor regarding man, understanding dark sentences. So he shall be a wicked king. He shall be practicing dishonesty, master of, of deceit, master of lies. He shall be in the depth of Satan as well as any man. So he was wise to do evil. This king, you would be wise in doing evil. His success. He shall make indurendifo havoc of the nations about him. His power shall be mighty. Bear down all before it, but not by his own power, verse 24 tells us. But partly by the assistance of his allies. Even the Jews, some of the Jews who are supporting him to destroy others. Even of the priest that came into his interest. And that is how the kingdom of the world rules. They come, they, they send you some of the people. Those people now... They are corrupted and they are used by the master to destroy and to touch others. Even when the colonists came in Africa, they bought some of the Africans by the name of uh, chief, senior chief, who were used to torture their fellow men. And that is, that is what happened in the kingdom of the world. That is how it rules. So this king also used some of the Jews to torture others, including the priests. It was not by his own power, but by the power given him from above, that he destroyed you wonderfully, and he thought he made himself a great man by being a great destroyer. So he destroys wonderfully indeed, for he destroys the mighty people, and they cannot resist him by their power. The princes of Egypt cannot stand before him with all their forces, but he practices against them and he prospers. So the mighty ones of the earth commonly meet with those at length that there are two and for them. Even the person who thinks he is mighty, God sends somebody who is mightier than that person. So there is nothing that person is in the and they think that they are at the peak. Without God, there is no being at the peak because you are a fragile. You can easily be broken anytime. Let not the strong man then glory in his strength. That Actually, that is what the Bible tells us. Let the, the, let the wise man not in glory in their wisdom. That they are all the not in glory in their in, in their world. But the one who should glory should glory that he knows God. That is and God who practice justice and righteousness. He executed God executes righteousness and justice. So he destroys the holy people, the people of the holy ones, the people of God. <coughs> he, by destroying them. All things come alike to all, and there is one event to the mighty and to the only one in this world. So even the people who fear God in this world, they face challenges. But the good thing is, as they go through challenges, through the trials and the temptation, God is with them. That is the difference. The methods by which you will gain this success, we are told here, you will not, not, not by true courage or wisdom or justice, but by policy and crafty. By fraud and deceit, by subtable, 
He shall cause craft to prosper so cunningly. Shall he carry on his project that he shall gain his point by the art of weeding. By peace he shall destroy many as others do by war under the pretense of treaties, leagues and alliances with them. He shall any, any cross on their right and trick them into, a, into subjection to them. Even today we see leaders prospering through craft, through lies, through mischief. That is what the, the leaders of this world prosper with. They lie to people and the people think they are their savior and they end up prospering. Why? Because people have rejected God. They have decided to trust in men. So that is how this Antioch has prospered. And that is even how Antichrist will prosper when he comes. He comes like a person who is bringing peace to the whole world. And many people will believe in him because they will think he is the solution. But, but after a while, they will realize that they have been deceived when it will be too late, when you will start you now torturing them. The mischief that he shall do to religion, he shall magnify himself in his art and think himself fit to prescribe and give law to everybody. So that he shall stand up against the prince of princes, that is Christ himself, that is against God himself. That is why he is called Antichrist. He will profane his temple and the altar. Private his worship and persecute the worshippers. Actually, that is what the Antiochus did. He defined God. He rejected God. And he called himself God. The ruin that he shall be brought to at last. So, initially, you will appear to be prospering. But you will be destroyed. You shall be broken without hand. Meaning that God himself will be doing it. That is without the hand of man. He shall not be slain in war. Nor shall he be assassinated as tyrant commonly war, but he shall fall into the hand of the living God. And, and actually it is recorded, it is a deadly thing to fall into the hand of God because our God is a consuming fire and a dying by an immediate stroke of his vengeance. He hearing that the Jews and cast the image of Jupiter, this, this is recorded in, in the history, Olympias out of the temple. Actually what he did, he came destroying the temple, sacrificed the idols there, and substituted the temple of Jews with an idol by the name Jupiter Olympia. And now a time came when he was, he, when this idol was removed by the Jews. So what he did, he determined to march immediately, but no sooner, and he spoken with these proud ones. Actually, what he did, this king, when he heard that the idol had been removed from Jerusalem, he saw that he would go and now destroy the entire Jerusalem. But now, when he started speaking that way, it is recorded in history that uh, he was struck with an incurable plague, which made him to start having worms in the in, in the whole of his body. And now he started suffering, he started being tormented by this disease, such that he started even having stench on his body. So he started suffering. At first, he persisted in his menaces against the Jews, but at length, despairing of his recovery, he called his friends together and acknowledged all those miseries to have uh, fallen upon him for the injuries he had done to the Jews and is profaning the temple of, at Jerusalem. Actually, we, we are told that he wrote a courteous letter to the Jews and vowed that if he recovered, he would let them have the freedom to exercise their own religion, to pray freely. For to their own God. But we are told that this disease continued to increase and he could no longer endure the smell which was coming from his body. So it meant to submit to so it so it was meant to make him submit to God. For man who is mortal not to set himself in competition with God. So it is a dangerous thing to compete with God or to think that you are the overall. It is only God who gives people opportunity to exercise that which they, they have been given. So everything we have, all the roles we have, all the possession we have, we should always recognize that we are a mortal. Mortal means we are dying. Without God, we are, we are nothing. And we should always acknowledge God, not to use our possession to mistreat other people or to exploit others. So let us check out. Otherwise, we, we can be struck, just like this proud king was struck by this plague and he suffered and deadly death and this was about uh, 
160 BC. That is when this king uh, died. So this, this this is teaching us the importance of humility and the importance of even the people who now are trusting in God not to fear, not to be worried, not to be anxious because the evil will come to an end. No matter how the evil appear to be prospering, a time is coming when the evil will come to an end. So let us be encouraged in the, in the Lord because God is the overall. The enemy will be defeated. The enemy will be destroyed. No matter how long it takes, our God is a faithful God. He will do it for us. So let us continue fixing our eyes unto the Lord. Here we are given also the conclusion of the vision. We are told the change given to Daniel to keep it private for the present. Shut, shut up the vision. That is what he was told. Let that let, 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 let not be publicly known among the Candians. Lest the Persians who are now shortly to possess the kingdom should be incensed against the Jews by it, because the downfall of their kingdom was foretold by it, which would be unseasonable. Now that the edict for their release was expected from the king of Persia, shut it up for it shall be for many days. It was about three years, I mean, it was about three hundred years from the time of this vision to the time of the accomplishment of it. Therefore, it must shut it up for the present, even from the people of the Jews, lest it should amaze and publish them. But let it be kept safely for the generations to come, like you and me, that, that should live about the time of the accomplishment of it. For, for to them, it would be both most intelligible and most serviceable. So even as here, we are learning that, that we know of the things of God, so we should be carefully laid up that hereafter, when there is occasion, it may be faithfully laid out. And what we have now, we should lay it out even for the generation to come. Divine truth should be sealed up among our treasures that we may find them again after many days. The care he took to keep it private. So Daniel took care to keep this vision private having received such a, a chance. So even as when God teaches us, it is good to obey, to respond in faith and be obedient. We are told he fainted and was sick with the multitude of his thought within him, occasioned by the vision which oppressed and overwhelmed him. The more because he was forbidden to publish what he had seen, so that his belly was as wine, which as no vet. He was ready to burst like new bottles. Actually, Job tells us, Job that the 2 verse 19 says that, that uh, beyond my belly is as wine, which has no of it. It is ready to burst like new bottles. That means that uh, when you have things in you, a lot of them inside you, but you cannot speak them out. That is the, word, that is the metaphor here. Beyond my belly is as wine, which has no of it. Vet it is an opening. And op and a vet is an opening which releases air even in your vehicle. It is ready to burst like new bottles. So that was the condition, and that is what meant uh, Daniel fell asleep. But this was necessary because he was in Babylon, and at this time the, the kingdom of Babylon was about to fall any time. The kingdom of Babylon was about to fall any time at that time. And God knew that if they would, they would know what was happening, then they would have tortured Jews who are who are in captivity. Remember Cyrus? He is the one who even ordered the return of Jews to Jerusalem and actually even erupted them to rebuild Jerusalem. So God used these metaphors or these visions to speak to Daniel so that the people who are not intending to know the message could not know it, it at that time. So there's some God when he speaks and some people don't understand him because at that time the message is not meant for everyone. Actually, when Christ spoke with the parables and when he was asked by his disciples in, this, in, in, in declaring that this message is not for everyone, but it is for those who it is meant for. So he fainted and was sick with the multitude of his thought. That is what we, we are told. The message overwhelmed him because he could not speak it. 
and um, but of course he kept it to himself still put and smoothed the concern he was in so that so that now he he kept it and he wrote it actually as we are reading today but after sometimes we are told that uh, he was able to go back to do the business of the kingdom so as long as we live in this world we must have something to do in it we should not be idle we should not be lazy we are told here actually that 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 concern he was he was in later on he went to do the the king's business that is daniel to do his duty so even us we should do business where we are here we should not be lazy we should do business and god is going to be with us just as daniel even when we stand this revelation and we understand that everything is coming to an end that does not uh, tell us to be idle but you shouldn't be active we shouldn't be active glorifying god in each and every aspect of our life what is needed is for us to align everything that we do to perfect the will of god so that it can be fulfilling and as we do it we should know that god is with us so god as most dig- god was most dignified with his favors so even us whatever we do whatever business god has given us we should do it to glorify god in and duty god has given you whether you are a mother whether you are a father whatever position you have whatever place god has placed you such a season like now do it with all might do it with all diligence knowing that you are serving the lord and let us avoid being lazy god has blessed each and every one of us provided you are alive you can do something we see and daniel continuing with the matter of the king serving the king with the diligent and actually even the new king who took over he, 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 he promoted him so whatever we are trusted in in the public we should do them with all due diligence so may god bless you my dear people for the opportunity god has given you to stand his word my prayer for to us is that we will put the word of god into practice and we are going to understand that the word of god is true this was a prophecy concerning persians and demandants and concerning concerning greeks and as we are talking now this prophecy was fulfilled so this gives me a lot of confidence in the word of god because if god has kept these prophecies even is even the promises he is giving to us today that christ is coming and he is going to perfect everything in our lives god for sure shall come and when he shall come we shall be like him so my prayer to you is that you are, you are not just going to be the hearers of the word of god but you are going to be the doers of the word of god so that you may bring fruit fruit that will bring glory to god god bless you and keep you let us co- let us continue following god's ways in each and every aspect of our life kindly subscribe to this channel so that you may continue learning i also urge us to share with our friends so that we can be partakers of god's blessings which he has kept for us in this season of our life bye bye see you next time